This is Dark Matter Sniping and Black Ops 6. Class setups after the intro. Oh my god. Oh no, that's bad. Oh, that's bad. I tagged it. I- I TAGGED A QUAD! What's going on guys, it's Rage, and once again, welcome back to some more Black Ops 6. So now that BO6 has been out for a little over a week at this point in time, I finally got all of my snipers maxed out, and here for today's video, I wanted to go ahead and just talk about the sniping in this game, show off the classes that I'm using, what I recommend using for certain attachments. I'll get into more of my overall thoughts on the sniping later on into the video, but just as a quick starting note, I really do enjoy the sniping in this game a lot. I do feel it's pretty outclassed for the most part, and just like I was talking about in the beta, the sniping is solid for what it's worth, but there's still a lot of room for improvement. So to go ahead and start this off, I wanted to show two examples of builds for all of the current snipers in the game. First set of attachments I'm going to be showing off, I have the Gunfighter wildcard on all of these classes. Now, this is very dependent on your specific playstyle. I wanted to go ahead and include a Gunfighter build having eight attachments on the weapon because I've seen uh, quite a few people run this kind of setup. Personally, as far as the wildcard goes for me, I almost always run perk greed, so I'm going to have five attachments on my snipers. It's just the way that I play COD. If I can run perk greed and have something on like flak jacket and attack mask, I'm going to be running that. So here for the gunfighter build on the LR762, these are all of the attachments that I have on it right now. The muzzle brake, short barrel, precision handguard, extended mag 1. I've seen quite a few people run extended mag 2 on the LR. It's completely up to you because with extended mag 2, the ADS is at 540 milliseconds as opposed to 520 with extended mag 1. It's a very small difference, but if you're someone that's used to Cold War sniping, you'll probably be fine with extended mag 2. But again, that's completely up to you. Next up, we got the quick draw grip, the heavy stock, target laser, and the rapid fire mod. Over here on the LW W3 Frostline, it's a pretty similar build. I have the Muzzle Brake, Reinforced Barrel, Precision Pad, Extended Mag 1, the Commando Riser, Heavy Stock, Target Laser, and Rapid Fire. Lastly, over here on the SVD, the Dragonov in this game, I'm using the Blandwell 7X Scope, the Ported Compensator, Reinforced Barrel, Precision Handguard, got the Commando Riser on the Comb, Heavy Stock, Target Laser, and the Recoil Springs. Now, for some of the attachments across all of the snipers, I'm sure you guys have realized some similarities as to what I like to run. Now, again, because I'm someone who likes to run Perk Greed, I'm only going to have five attachments on my main snipers. Sniper build. So here on the LR762, it's these five attachments. Over here on the LW3, I take off the muzzle brake, reinforced barrel, and the precision pad. And then here on the SVD, I take off the scope, reinforced barrel, and precision handguard. For the base builds that I run on a lot of the snipers, the biggest key is the target laser. The reason as to why the target laser is the biggest piece to the puzzle here is because when you go to ADS, it's so steady. Black Ops 6 here has that Black Ops 1 kind of style of sniping where once you aim in, it's really off center. So if you're someone who likes to run around a quick scope, ideally the target laser is is going to be the best bet. Now, I have heard quite a few people talk about the Strelic laser because it really increases that hip fire to ADS accuracy. And really what that means is your pop shotting accuracy. When you go to quick scope when you're not fully ADS, it's that very small window of time from when you go from hip to ADS that your accuracy is supposed to be greatly improved. But the thing is, if you're pop shotting all the time, it might not be that accurate. I try to take the RNG out of the factor and focus more on my centering personally, but also at the same time, I did hear that they stealth nerfed the Strelic laser. Again, this is going to kind of sound like a dude trust me bro kind of moment i haven't seen any official patch notes about it but i have seen quite a few people talk about how it really does feel like they kind of shadow nerfed it now the thing is again without the target laser again as you can see the moment you ads the reticle is just jumping all around which is why i again recommend running the target laser on practically all of your snipers because when you go to ads with the target laser you're dead center wherever you're aiming that is where your crosshair is going to be so again this is my personal recommendation very very nice for sniping and i like it a lot especially for the bolt action rifles in the game right now rapid fire is a great option even though honestly here on the lw3 maybe this is an unpopular opinion or maybe i'm just used to slow sniping in call of duty nowadays but even if you don't have rapid fire on the timing of the bolt is still pretty all right so say for example if you wanted to run fmj or something else entirely on the lw3 you could now over here on the svd one of the best attachments that you get is actually at the end and it's the ported compensator the ported compensator here with the recoil springs on the svd is super beneficial to use again with the target 
target laser, you're going to be very on center wherever you aim. But when you go to fire the SVD, it doesn't have that much recoil to it. Even though a lot of the time I do find myself kind of pop shotting like this, I do find that having the recoil springs on along with the compensator makes it a little bit more controllable if you do stay in scope. Because without these attachments on, the SVD kicks quite a lot. See the difference? For example, if I go to shoot this guy in the stomach, not only does it kick a lot, it doesn't go back to center. So again, having something like the recoil springs on and the ported compensator on really helps out a lot with the SVD. What you could do as well if you want to mix and match the five attachments is maybe take off the target laser and put on something like the precision handguard to help with a little bit more of that aiming idle sway and recoil control. That again is completely up to you on your play style, but these are the attachments that I recommend for this. Now, before we go in and jump into a game, I will be running the gunfighter builds, but I'll probably switch back to the perk greed here in a little bit. One of the final things that I wanted to talk about real quick as far as the sniping goes in this game is the collateral damage and potential of such. From the little bit of testing that I've done, collaterals do work. You can absolutely hit six and ones. What did kind of throw me off a little bit was the fact that all of the enemies were standing still and I was able to get six and ones. Typically, it doesn't work like that and the way that collaterals register a lot better carries more penetration through targets is when your targets are actually moving and running. If the potential is there to hit quads, five and ones, six and ones while the enemies are standing still, collaterals are absolutely possible and that is even without FMJ. It's really nice here in Black Ops 6 as comparison to Modern Warfare 3 last year where you don't have to run armor piercing rounds or a certain ammo type to have a better chance of hitting a collateral. Of course, things like FMJ will absolutely help, but you're also having to trade off the rapid fire for it. So it again is very dependent on your play style and how you like to play. I did notice at distance while my targets were running, it was only triples and quads. All that potential is still there for it, but at those super long ranges, considering how the maps are in Black Ops 6, you're probably not going to have very many opportunities where you're getting long shot collaterals like that. Or at least finding yourself in a situation where you're going to hit a cross map quad like that. I know I've been yapping a whole lot, but one last thing that I wanted to really thank Triarch for is adding in these damage graphs. Especially with all the new hitboxes, you can see exactly how much damage your weapon is going to do. How much damage your weapon's going to do depending on where you hit them. Basically here with the LR762, just add a base value. If you shoot them in the stomach, you're going to get that one shot. The SVD and the Frost line here have very comparable stats for the most part that you have to hit that upper chest basically within the effective ranges of 63 and a half meters 50.8 with the svd and 76.2 with the lr 762 if you hit them in that one hit kill area they're going to go down seriously use these graphs to your advantage if you're mixing and matching attachments if you're curious about things they have it all right here right in front of you if you're curious as to where they get the details once you have it up here on the gunsmith click down here toggle details turn on the toggle details and then go back to your creative class and choose a sniper and there you go you can see it for again literally every single weapon in the game. For those of you guys that were curious about my sniper builds, there you guys go. Uh, I've also seen quite a few comments asking about my sensitivity in DPI. I run a 1000 DPI with a 2.2-ish sensitivity in this game. Typically on the newer Call of Duties, like basically ever since Black Ops 4 is when the sensitivity scaling changed, I usually run 2.33 on these newer games. Something about Black Ops 6 though, 2.33 felt really fast, so I adjusted it ever so slightly down to 2.2, so hardly a difference. Nice, we're starting the day off on Vorkuda. Awesome. Oh, nice. There we go. Why am I getting my body shot? Like, I... Hello? Yes, you have a Diamond Jackal PDW. Yes, you're very good. Wow. I'm impressed. Now, I was gonna say, though, I know the Frost Line here is easily the uh, weaker of the two bolt actions in this game, obviously, but I'm still really trying to figure it out. It's so interesting to me because we have this Tundra L96-like sniper in the game, and yet it has the damage and handling of, like, the Pellington from Cold War. I don't know what I did to this guy, but he is uh, not happy with me. I don't know. Maybe he doesn't like snipers or something. I can red gun and shoot bodies too. It's not hard. This guy is ninth prestige. Oh, hell. Nah, nah, man. You can have that lobby. That's yours, bro. Nah. So again, though, I did want to talk a little bit more about the overall sniping in this game. Like I was saying earlier, I really do enjoy the feel of it. It is a whole lot of fun to snipe in this game, and I really do enjoy it. I just feel like, given the way the maps are designed right now, this game is very SMG dominated. Even on a professional level, because I feel like I see every day a new AR gets uh, GA'd. New ARs are getting GA'd every single day in the pro scene, so I'm guessing it's all just heavily SMG dominated, but even in reg lobbies, a lot of the time, yeah, you see people running around with things like the Tanto or the Jackal. I feel like with the map design in a lot of cases, it's very SMG dominated just because of the tight corridors or even the movement in a lot of cases. It really does benefit just reg gunning in general. It's not to say that you can't do fancy things or do crazy movement and outplay people with snipers in this game. It just feels like, again, given a lot of the circumstances, yeah, sniping's kind of at a disadvantage, and that's fine. I don't really think the sniping needs to be like over buffed or anything like that or 
or it needs like an increase in aim assist for controller players or needs faster ADS or needs to be a one hit kill to the toenail. It doesn't need things like that. I think the main thing that could be adjusted is if uh, we didn't have to rely on the target laser to make things a little bit more centered. Like if there was just better centering accuracy, it doesn't need to be pinpoint perfect. And that's where the target laser could come in to make it more pinpoint accurate. But just as a basis, I don't think the scopes need to be swaying around like this when you first ADS with them. I know I've definitely used Black Ops 3 as an example for this a lot, but I really do feel like Black Ops 3 is a pretty solid example where again, we could have a game like that that doesn't have aim assist on snipers, but the handling of them, one shot capabilities, things like that could be a lot better, could be a lot faster with that kind of trade-off. But also at the same time, Black Ops 3 had really solid centering, not just for snipers, but for all the weapons in the game. We saw it last year with Modern Warfare 3, and I can kind of understand why they probably don't want to make the centering so perfect, just because anyone who's really, really good with the sniper, it's going to make it seem super overpowered, especially in most cases being a one hit kill weapon. Yeah, in the right hands, it's going to absolutely dominate if the centering is damn near perfect. But like last year with Modern Warfare 3, we saw those adjustments to the centering that made it a lot better just across the board, except on snipers. So again, it's not a giant surprise that we see a very similar thing here in Black Ops 6. I just feel like, again, maybe a slight centering buff would be nice. It'd be a good first step. One other thing that I forgot to talk about a little bit ago is just the flinch in this game, especially when you're sniping an ADS. If it wasn't obvious enough, that's the huge reason as to why I basically run the heavy stock on every single sniper in the game. It's also one thing that I really do like about this game is the way that Treyarch handled the attachments. Sure, some attachments do have a couple trade-offs here and there, but for the most part, an attachment actually gives you more pros than cons. Like, yeah, for example, the quick draw grip on snipers or the quick draw combs, whatever it might be depending on the gun, it'll give you like a plus three for ADS, but a minus three on the flinch resistance. You use the heavy stock to kind of negate that, balance that back out. And even with something like the heavy stock on, it's not like any other Call of Duty or at least the previous CODs, for example, where you'd get like a plus three flinch resistance, but it would take away movement speed or ADS time. I really do like the way that Treyarch balanced a lot of the attachments in this game, giving us more pros than cons, doesn't always feel like you're trading everything off. It's not like you go to put a red dot on your gun, then all of a sudden you get a minus one on your ADS speed. On that note, though, that's going to go ahead and wrap up this video. I really hope you guys enjoyed. Go ahead and let me know down in the comment section below how you guys are finding the sniping here in Black Ops 6. Let me know your thoughts and opinions on it. Thank you all so much for checking out this video. Leave a like if you guys enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. It's Enrage, and I will talk to you guys later. Take care, everybody.